Peter Levine's varied career has encompassed everything from being a government advisor to serving as Lord Mayor of London. Alongside numerous non-executives directorships, he is also a member of the House of Lords Select Committee for Economic Affairs. Peter Levine has been chairman of Lloyd's for almost 10 years and joins me now from London. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. How concerned are you that we've had so many catastrophes, so many concerns, of course, about tsunamis and that it may get, just get worse? Well, nobody knows what's going to happen. That's the whole point about insurance. Uh, we cover against the unexpected and we're there to make good when things go wrong. Um, last year, that's 2010, uh, was a pretty good year for us. Uh, didn't in any way match 2009, which was an all-time record. But we made uh, over two billion pounds profit. But of course, you know, people people forget very quickly. Last year ended on the 31st December. Since then, we've had the uh, uh, Japanese tsunami and earthquake. We've had another earthquake in New Zealand. So this year is is not going to be uh, an easy one. But it's it's within our normal parameters, and uh, uh, we will do what we always do, which is to pay when the unexpected happens, and that's what we're there for. Will we see a profit for this year? Well, it's much too early to say. You know, we're now towards the end of March. Uh, it's not even the f end of the first quarter yet, so it's too early to say. But what kind of impact can we actually expect from the Jap Japanese earthquake? Well, the Japanese earthquake and tsunami, look, you, before you say anything else, you, you've got to realize the human impact, and anybody who saw those pictures on TV uh, will be horrified by that. But in terms of what it will do to us at Lloyd's, it's a large event, uh, no more and no less than that. So as far as we're concerned, it's within our normal business parameters. Uh, we have a good uh, understanding of these things. We have what we call realistic disaster scenarios. We plan these in advance. If we didn't, we wouldn't be in business. And the uh, Japanese earthquake and tsunami will be within our normal business and will be another large event, as indeed the terrible earthquake in New Zealand was uh, yeah. earlier this year. And because of the events in Japan, but also other disasters across the world, how do you see the outlook for premium rates going? Well, I know where I think they ought to be going, um, because we can only pay, and the whole of the industry can only pay, when they get enough money in to fund it. At the moment, uh, premium rates are still more or less static. Um, don't forget that those who insure want to make uh, certain that those who uh, cover their costs are well funded to do so. So I think it, there's likely to be a, a modest increase, but it will depend on the market. We are a market and we respond to market forces. And should uh, insurers, including yourself, give more capital back to shareholders? Well, I don't, I don't think you're going to be giving capital back to shareholders when you need plenty of money there to meet uh, what is clearly yeah. already a difficult year. But then you're competing against possibly companies that are just giving dividends back. Well, uh, don't forget that Lloyd's is not uh, a business. We are a market, and within our market are a large number of insurers um, who will have to make sure that they do what we always do, which is that when we get a claim and we're responsible for it, we pay it. And that, I think, for our policyholders is much the most important thing. Um, what's your view on Solvency 2? What do you expect the likely outcome of the tests to be? Well, I think that's too early to say. I mean, it, it's a huge operation for the industry. It requires an enormous amount of work. It's designed clearly to make sure that the whole of the insurance industry remains in good shape and able to meet its obligations. Um, I'm sure we will all get there in the end, um, but we have to make sure that the formula is a reasonable one, which we're still negotiating to try to do. Yeah. And we have to make sure that the administration of it and the paperwork and the work involved on that side doesn't swamp the real interest of our business, which is to cover the um, risks of our policyholders. So if you look at what you've heard so far on Solvency 2, do you think it's just going to be too harsh in terms of the effect on insurance and customers? And what would you ask the regulator to do today? Well, what we'd ask the regulator to do is to listen to what the industry is saying to them and to ensure that the regime that finally comes into effect is one which both protects the policyholders and keeps the industry in good shape to meet the claims that are made on it. Now, what's your take uh, overall about the markets, equities? We're seeing a little bit possibly of a relief. Are we over the worst? <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a sage. And, uh, you know, the market is the market is a market. 
you never really know what's going to happen. There's been some pretty extraordinary things happened in the world uh, in the last few months. And I think anybody who can make a confident prediction as to what is going to happen um, is likely to get their fingers burnt one way or the other. So. Uh, well, let's wait and see. Yeah, it's a fair assessment, but your biggest concern, a lot of uh, investors tell us that actually when interest rates start getting higher, that's when we're going to see the most volatility or possibly uh, th the biggest swings on the market. Well, I'll leave that to the market watchers. All right, Lord Levine, thank you so much for giving us your time this morning. You're welcome.